What is up peeps? Brent McCluskey here with electricridereview.com and today we are reviewing the Glion Dolly Model 215 electric scooter. Now this thing is honestly quite a bit of fun to ride. It's got a 250 watt motor that will propel this little thing up to 15 miles an hour for a total range of 15 miles, which really isn't that bad for something this compact. Now, right off the bat, I just want to say that probably my very favorite thing about this machine right here is that it can go from this to this. So I'm going to break down this machine for you right now. We're going to start from the top, work our way down all the way to the end here. And then after that, we will throw up some pros and some cons and we will talk about some of the things that I love about this machine, some of the things that I don't like about it, and some things I'd like to see improved in the future. So let's start up at the top of this vehicle and we will cover what's on the handlebar. So, on the right hand side of the handlebars, there is a half grip twist throttle. Your battery readout display and a little red button which turns on and off the light. So let's start with the half grip twist throttle. So this thing is actually pretty responsive as far as however much you twist it is really how fast you're going to go. So if you only want to go a few miles an hour, you know, this thing is really responsive. You can give it just a little bit of gas and it's going to react accordingly. This little red button up here on the right hand side of the handlebars, that turns on and off your front headlamp. So <laughs> let's talk about the headlamp just real quick. The headlamp is there. It's not super bright. It's not a great beam pattern. You're not going to be able to use this headlamp to illuminate your path. It's a good piece of gear to let uh, you know oncoming traffic and pedestrians kind of see you as you're coming, but uh, the beam pattern is really striated. It looks kind of like a barcode. You know, um, if you do want something to illuminate your path, I would definitely recommend maybe buying an aftermarket light. I'll drop a link down in the description to some headlamps that I use on my electric vehicles. I think it would be a good fit for the Glion as well. And on the top of the right hand side of the handlebars, we've got the heads up display. So the heads up display on the Glion, it's not bad. It's just not that great. It's really nothing to write home about. The only piece of information that you get to see on this little heads up display up here is basically your battery level. And I'm gonna tell you right now that the battery level is not exactly super accurate. So if you're trying to see how much mileage you've got left or how much battery you have left, don't count on this thing giving you an accurate reading. So after about four miles or so, the battery indicator said I had one bar left. So I was at 25% battery or less. Now, however, I basically kept going on this thing for another, I think it was seven miles before I actually ran out of juice. So, you know, it's not super accurate, but it is there and that's a plus. Now, in my opinion, I, I really wish that this thing had, you know, a speed indicator on it, a mileage indicator to let you know how fast you're going and let you know how far you've gone. Again, I, I know I always say this, but you know, if you've got a heads up display already on an electric vehicle, like why not add that extra information on there? You've already got it hardwired into the system. You already got electricity going to it. So you may as well add some extra information if you can. In the middle of the handlebars is a little plastic kind of covering, like a protective covering. And it's there basically so that when you fold the Glion and you're towing it behind you, if you want to stand it up, um, it actually rests right here on the handlebars. I think it's basically there just to keep it from getting scratched up. On the left hand side of the handlebars, there is a cute little bell, which again is actually pretty good if you want to let passerbys know that, hey, I'm coming up, please don't hit me. So check this out, this is how loud it is. Right, not bad. Okay, not bad. Uh, and then if we keep going to the left side of the handlebars, we've got another half grip twist throttle. But for this, it's actually not a throttle, it's a brake. So <laughs> when I first opened this up, I saw two twist throttles, one on each side, and I thought, oh my gosh, does this thing have like dual motors and each, each twist throttle like controls one motor? No, on the left side is a brake, the right side is a throttle. So this is the first time that I've seen a twist throttle to be used as a brake. So it was kind of weird to see it. Um, it's fine, it's just kind of weird, maybe just something to get used to. Now the brakes themselves are actually really strong, so it's electric braking, right? It's regenerative braking, it's using the motor right here, the 250 watt motor in the back to slow you down. The good news is the braking is really powerful, it's really strong, you can actually stop like with the quickness. Now the bad news is, is that with this brake right here, you only have one level of braking, it's either off or it's full brake. There is no in between. I mean, it's a twist throttle. You can put it on different settings, but once the brake's activated, like it's going to give you a full stop until you come to a stop. So 
Not the worst thing in the world, but I do wish that there was the same level of responsiveness on the brake as there is on the throttle. Right here on both sides of the handlebars are these two little connectors. You pull them out and that's actually how you disassemble this thing for when you wanna fold it up. So that's all you gotta do, just pull these little pieces of metal, they fold down. When you wanna actually unfold it, you just snap them back up like that and it's really that simple, like it doesn't take very long at all. Right at the top of the stem is the little quick release lever so you can raise or lower the handlebars to your liking. There's three different settings. There's this one right here, which is the lowest. There's a middle one, which is right here. And there's the highest, which is right here. And if we keep going down the stem, at the bottom, we've got the headlamp. I don't know exactly how bright this thing is, but I gotta say again, it's not the best headlamp in the world. Um, it's certainly not the worst, but it's not very bright. It doesn't have a good beam pattern. It is nice that it uh, is there because again, you know, if people can see you as you're coming. So I'm glad that it's on there. I wish that it had a more powerful headlamp though. So the stem right here, the handlebars, the whole, this whole chassis is made out of aircraft grade aluminum. So the Glion is actually pretty light, weighing in at 28 pounds. And at the very bottom of the stem, we've got the tires. So these things are actually really, really nice. I really like these tires. They're eight inches. They are honeycomb, never flat tires. So they're not pneumatic. There's not air in them, or maybe there's air in them, but not a lot. Like you can't pump them up or anything, um, but they're never flat. So if you run over a nail or some thorns or whatever, you don't have to worry about getting a flat on your trip. So that I really dig about it. Another thing I really like about these tires is just the geometry of them. They're, they're actually rounded. So that makes turning and it makes leaning into turns like really easy. I've ridden some other electric scooters where, you know, the mo it's a hub motor just like this. Um, and the tire is like completely flat. So it's really difficult to turn. And it basically the machines, you know, it just wants to go in a straight line. Whereas with this thing, you know, it's got a nice curvature on the tires. It's got a nice tire profile and it makes just it makes riding the Glion actually pretty enjoyable. And I attribute that to the awesome tire profile on these things. On this little tiny down tube section on the right hand side of the machine, that's where the battery charging port is. So there's a little cover on it. You can flip it open and it reveals the charging port. You can just plug it in right there. It takes about three and a half hours to charge. So not that bad. This little metal piece right here is the quick release lever for the stem. So you can press this down with your foot or your hand, whatever. The stem folds down, you fold in the handlebars and you can pull out this little handle right here and you can tow this thing behind you like a, like a suitcase or whatever, or a foldable electric scooter, I guess. But I really, I really dig this function um, of having the handle built into the frame because when you fold this thing up, it's actually pretty compact. It's 36 inches long, 16 inches tall, and only eight inches wide. So it's really like a pretty compact package that you can bring into a coffee shop with you. You can bring it into the office. You can bring it into your home to work, whatever. Um, and it's not, you know, making a scene like if you were bringing the, uh, you know, like a Holly burn with you or the, the fat scooter or something like that. Inside the deck, the Glion is rocking some Sony batteries that are 36 volts. Um, now, again, the range that this thing says that it has online on the website is 15 miles. So the actual range that I got out of it was 11 miles, which really is not that bad at all because I'm a 200 pound rider. I'm always going full speed. I'm braking a lot. I do go up some hills and I gotta say 11 miles is, is really not that bad. I was kind of expecting worse, especially because this thing is just so small. So 11 miles when the estimated range is 15, dig that. And at the very back of the machine, we've got the 250 watt hub motor. So this thing is not the most powerful motor in the world. Obviously it's only 250 watts, but given the fact that it's not the most powerful motor in the world, it does still get you where you're going. I mean, as long as you don't plan on tackling, you know, 30% inclines or carrying a hundred pounds of gear with you or whatever, like it's going to get you where you're going. I'm a 200 pound rider. And for me, I was able to climb all the hills in my local city without any real issues. You're, I definitely bogged down a little bit, but I didn't come to a complete stop. It wasn't anything super noticeable. It was just, I kind of slowed down. I wasn't going max speed, that's it. Now with the motor, there's kind of some downsides to this particular motor right here. As far as noise is concerned, this hub motor is a little bit louder than some of the other ones that I've tested in the past. I don't know what it is about it, but there's, there's a constant kind of just relatively loud whirring noise that you get when you're driving, even when you're not under load, even when you're not climbing hills, just like, like at full speed when you're cruising, like this thing still puts off a decent amount of noise. The other thing that's kind of an issue or just something to note about this motor in particular is that while the throttle itself is responsive, um, as far as, you know, like what level of speed you want to go, 
there's kind of a delay when we get to the motor. So when you twist the throttle, there's a half second to even up to a second of delay before you get power to the motor, right? I know that's kind of an issue with some hub motors, but that is something I wanted to point out with this motor in particular. It's not a super quick wind up. Um, so just something to be aware of. And at the very, very end of this machine, we've got these two little wheels on either side and this tiny little cute little kickstand. <laughs> the kickstand does work, it's really small. Um, there's not a lot of surface area on the foot of it, so if you're gonna put it on grass or a soft surface, it's, it's probably gonna sink in, just to let you know. So that's kind of a general rundown of the specs of the Glion scooter. Now let's talk about some of the pros, some of the cons, and some things I'd like to see done differently in the future. So the very first thing I'm gonna throw up here in the pros column is going to be the range. Now again, at 11 miles, that was my experience of the average range of this thing, 11 miles is really not that bad at all. It's got an estimated range of 15. Personally, I found that it was 11 miles and that's kind of in line of what I was expecting. You know, generally I find that most electric vehicles have got about a 66% or like two thirds of the real range compared to what the estimated range is. So the Glion falls pretty much right in line with where that is. Now, if you're a lighter rider, if you don't plan on going full speed the entire time, like I do, if you don't have a lot of hills in your area, you probably will get closer to the 15 mile range, maybe even a little bit more. Pro number two, the brakes. So I really do dig that the braking on this thing is super powerful for such a small motor. I mean, again, 250 watts is not a whole lot of power, but it's able to somehow stop a lot more efficiently with this regenerative braking than a lot of other electric vehicles of a similar motor size. So I really like that it's got a powerful motor. It gives me kind of a lot of confidence when I'm riding it that I can go full speed without having to worry about, oh man, like what if a car pulls out or what if a, you know, a kid or like a pedestrian is running across the street or on the sidewalk, like am I gonna be able to stop in time? Nine times out of 10, I'm gonna say yes. And if you can't, I mean, because the top speed is only 15 miles an hour, you can probably just jump off it anyways. And for the third pro, I'm gonna throw the tires up there. Again, I just, I really like the, the tires. It makes it maneuver really well. The profile is fantastic. It's a nice, nice curvature. So it makes turning, it makes leaning into turns um, comfortable. Like you feel secure when you're turning. You don't feel like you're gonna tip over. You don't feel like you're gonna lose control. And the other thing I like about the tires, or I guess just the maneuverability in general, is the range of motion that the stem has. So check this out. Look how far you can turn the stem. Right, that's almost like a 90 degree turn right there and almost a 90 degree turn to the right. So what that means for me is that when I'm in a tight space, if I'm indoors, like it's easy to maneuver this thing around at slow speeds or even just when you're walking, like the fact that it has that range of motion is really awesome. So I'm lumping that in with the tires even though it's kind of a separate thing. And another pro is gonna be the fact that this thing folds down to such a compact size. Again, I, <laughs> I kind of thought it was a gimmick when I first got this, that it folded and had a little handle thing stuck in the stuck in the body, whatever. But when I actually used it, the more that I used it, the more I was like, wow, this is like a supremely functional aspect of this machine. And I, and I kind of started to like it more and more. So I really like that it does fold down. But more than that, I like that it has a handle that you can tow it behind you because you know, some other electric vehicles, they fold down too, but you still have to kind of carry it by the stem and you know, even 28 pounds or however you know much another electric vehicle weighs, that can get a little bit heavy after a while, but pulling this thing behind you, I mean, it's not, it's not a lot of effort at all. And for the last pro, I'm gonna say practical. Like this thing is just a practical machine. Like I feel like this is the business person's machine or like the college student's machine, right? Like this is an electric scooter for somebody who is looking to get to where they're going, not ruin their clothes, not be sweaty. You don't have to worry about storing it or putting it someplace safe, you can just bring it with you like wherever you go. I don't know, but it's practical. That's what I gotta say, it's practical. Now, there's some pros for sure, but there's also some cons. Now let's talk about those. So the first and biggest con for me is going to be the motor. Not that it's not powerful enough, because it definitely is, but there's two kind of primary things that really bug me about this motor in particular. And the first one is that, you know, like I mentioned, there's a delay in transferring the power from the throttle to the motor itself. So you twist the throttle and then like half a second or a second later, you actually feel yourself getting propelled forward. And that just kind of gets frustrating to me. I don't really like that. I wish it was more of an instantaneous thing. Twist the throttle, boom, you go. The other issue I have with a motor is that it's a little bit louder than I'd like it to be. It's not, you know, like super noisy. People aren't gonna be turning their heads when you pass by like, what is that noise? What is that youngster doing on that contraption? That's, that's not how it is, but it is noisier than I'd like. And I wish that they could find a way, I wish that Glion could find a way to kind of just minimize that whirring noise that you hear whenever this thing is in motion. 
Not a huge deal, not a deal breaker, but for me, if I'm gonna be nitpicky, I'm throwing that in there. Okay, con number two, I'm throwing the headlamp up there. I mean, this thing is, it's practically pointless. Like, <laughs> like I get that it's on there and I like that you can toggle it on and off with the little button on the handlebars. That's really cool, but I mean, realistically, I don't know, the headlamp, it doesn't do anything besides like let people know that you're coming. You can't use it like practically. You're not going to illuminate your path. Like I mentioned before, you're not gonna really see where you're going in the dark. So, I mean, I feel like I would prefer to pay a little bit more money to have a real headlamp on here, even if it drained the battery a little bit, like that'd be fine. But just something where I can turn it on at night and at 15 miles an hour, maybe have like 50 yards illuminated in front of me and I would feel comfortable, you know, traveling in the dark. The next thing on the cons list is going to be the braking. So I like that the braking is really strong and effective, but I don't like that there's only one level of braking. Like, it would be cool if you were able to, just like the responsiveness with the throttle, it'd be cool if you had that same level of responsiveness with the braking and you could have, you know, 10% braking with the motor, 15% braking. So if you're going down a slight hill, you can maybe maintain a certain speed, but still feed back energy into the battery, as opposed to going from full speed to like five miles an hour, which is a quick twist of the brakes. One more thing for the cons column, and that's it, I promise. So <laughs> I gotta put the quick release lever in the cons column, unfortunately. I like that it's here. I like that the Glion folds down and is super compact, but when you use the quick release lever and you're actually unfolding the stem, it clicks into place and that lets you know that this thing is secure, it's locked and ready to go. But the problem is, is that it will be like kind of locked even if it doesn't click into place. So it feels like it's sturdy and like ready to go, but then you can be driving and then like a few seconds later, this thing will collapse on you and that's the problem. The one thing I wanna suggest if you buy one of these things is when you are, are unfolding the stem, make sure that you hear that clicking noise when you actually are seating this thing all the way because that lets you know that it's actually locked. If you don't hear the clicking noise when you unfold the stem, like be careful. Just make sure you hear the clicking noise. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay, so now we gotta talk price and whether or not this thing is worth the money. The Glion electric scooter runs for 850 bucks, $849 technically, on the Glion website. Now, from my experience with the electric vehicles I tested for 849 bucks, this thing is definitely worth the money. There's some things I'd like to see improved on it. Like I mentioned, I, I wanna see a quieter motor. I wanna see more control when you're braking, but overall, 11 mile range, 250 watts of power. It does have a headlamp that you know kind of works, whatever. This is a good machine for somebody who is looking to have something that's practical. Like, again, this is the practical person's electric vehicle. It's not going to be the most fun. It's not going to be the fastest but it is going to get you where you're going and you're not gonna sweat. You're not going to like wrinkle your suit if that's what you're wearing. And like, again, I think this would be great for like college people or people that are going to work or whatever. You know, you can get to class, you can do it expediently. All in all, I really like the Glion. Again, like I gotta say that when I first got this thing, the fact that it folded down, the fact that there's a handle inside, I really thought it was kind of a gimmicky feature, but the more that I've used that, the more that I really, really kind of enjoyed this thing just for that one aspect alone. So now a lot of times I'm actually using the Glion over like my electric skateboard or some of my other bigger electric scooters. If I'm just going down the street to a coffee shop or to a gas station or something, because it's just so easy to get in and out of the places. Again, like I mentioned, the fact that this there's so much range of motion with the stem means that I can go indoors and I have to worry about running into stuff. Whereas something like the Holly Burn or the Fat Scooter, it's a little bit more difficult to maneuver indoors. Basically what I'm saying is I ended up liking this thing more than I expected that I would. So that's pretty much it guys. I hope you enjoyed the review of the Glion Model 215 electric scooter. If you did, please like, please sub. And of course, if you got a question, drop it in the comments below and we'll get back to you as quickly as we can. All right guys, thanks again for watching and peace.